everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kat, and for today, we're gonna be testing out a whole bunch of new makeup. So I am very, very excited for this. It's been a long time since I've tried like a full face of new stuff, and so this is, this is gonna be interesting. And the first thing that we're gonna jump into is Too Faced products from Il Maquillage. I don't know if you guys have seen like the 50 bajillion advertisements lately about the primer and the foundation and like the wrinkle remover cream and everything, just all of these products from Il Maquillage. And the like, the videos that they show make it look so so good where I'm like I have to try this there's it's gonna change my life and I think the real selling point for me was that a really good friend of mine Barbara Jean from the channel age is just a number she was uh someone that actually popped up in my YouTube ads where she was showing that she was using the products and I was like okay Barbara Jean's not gonna lie to me so <laughs> I was like let's try it out so I'll explain to you guys real quick like my frustrations with the website just so that you'll know like what was good what was bad so when i went in there both for the primer and for the foundation they ask so many questions about your skin and i feel like none of those things matter aside from like trying to figure out your skin tone for a primer it's the same primer regardless so like why do you need to know all of these things, why do you need to ask me like 30 questions about what skin type I have when you're just gonna recommend to me the same primer as everybody else? So I felt like it made sense for the foundation, does not make sense for the primer to, to be asking all of that. So I was like, I, a little bit frustrating because I am also someone that has the, the attention span of like a jelly bean. And so I'm like, what? I can't deal with all of this, just get me to like the product already. So when it came to the foundation though, it gave me two options. So I went on the website twice and the way that it works is after you fill in everything, it will send you an email to let you know what shade they recommend for you. And the email doesn't take long to get to you. The first email that they sent me was like, we recommend this shade for you. And I was looking at it and I'm like, that's borderline white. Like, I might be pale, but I'm not literally the color of my wall behind me. Like, I've got a little bit of skin tone to me. And so I was like, there's no way that that is correct. So I went on there and tried it again, and it gave me this shade, which is the one that I actually picked up. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be 100% a match, but it at least looks way closer to the other shades that I typically use, so I feel more comfortable with it. The one thing that I do like is that you have the ability to send it back if you don't like it. So I was like, that's cool. Um, although I will also say I am incredibly lazy, so the likelihood of me sending this back is very small. Typically, if foundations aren't the right skin tone for me, they're only off by like a little bit, so I'll just offset it with whatever bronzer or blush or whatever I'm using or like concealer just to help rebalance it. So I don't find that that is like something where I'm gonna take the time to send it back. Uh, but I did think that that was really nice. And so if you are someone that would send it back, they don't charge you until like the two week trial period is done, um, which is nice. You know, I thought that was uh, pretty cool that they that they have that as an like option. Even if I'm not gonna take advantage of it, I did think that was really nice. So those were the two things that I really wanted to discuss about this before we see how it works, is that I'm already like very much on the fence. So here we go. <laughs> so we're gonna try the primer first, and this is the No Filter Poreless Base Smoothing Primer. I'm pretty sure that they have two primers, uh, but this is the one that I grabbed, and it just has like a cute little pump on there, and I mean, it seems like it's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna go in the way I would with any of my primers, and if that ends up being the wrong way to put it on, then... It is what it is. <laughs> uh, I will also say that took like 30 pumps <laughs> and 30 very aggressive pumps before it really came out and did much of anything. So that's of note, I guess. <laughs> uh, it definitely feels very slick as I'm putting it on the skin. Um, I mean, maybe a tad 
greasy, but we'll see how it dries down. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. Um, how's my face looking in the, in the camera there? You let me know. Um, yeah, let's have a look in the mirror. Uh, my skin looks no different. Cool. <laughs> so as of right now, uh, no different than any other primer I might use. So for the foundation, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use a brush, even though I typically don't do that, because in like all of the advertisements, they have that like first streak that they do on their face, and I'm like, I wanna recreate that. But I do also have my blending brush, so I will still be smoothing it out with that to get the same effect that I typically get, because I'm like, I don't particularly enjoy using brushes to put foundation on. Um, I don't know why, I just don't. I, I like the look uh, with the makeup, but like, I prefer the look with the sponge, so that is that. So in case you guys are curious, my shade is 060, and uh, the name of this is the Woke Up Like This Flawless Base Foundation. So that is what we are dealing with. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna put like a little pump on the brush. I'm gonna start with one pump and then kind of go from there. So here's the moment, guys. I mean, in the viewfinder, it looks real good. Uh, on me, questionable. Um, I would say it's a little bit too yellowish, um, but we'll see like what it ends up doing. I will say it's pretty close to the other foundations that I use. So I'll just end up looking slightly tanner. I will also say that it has a slight perfumey scent to it um, that is not bad, um, but it is there. So if you are someone that does not enjoy scented foundations, keep that in mind that there is a scent to this guy. See, this is why I don't like brushes. I feel like I'm not getting any coverage and that the brush is just taking it all away. Yeah, it is also not evenly blended on my face at all. Also, I am someone that has very combination skin, but very dry if I have like a lot where I'm like touching my face, which is part of why I don't like using brushes because already I'm having skin starting to flake off in certain areas um, and so I don't like that so I'm just immediately going to switch over to the sponge do one more pump uh, which I also feel like when I use the sponge um, I get more coverage with it than I would with uh, <laughs> than I would normally get with like anything else oh yeah we're getting so much more coverage with the sponge um, yeah, I'm not gonna use the brush again for this product. <laughs> Just because this is already covering so much more um, with like one singular pump than I already had done two different pumps before and it was getting nowhere. <laughs> but to each their own, some people really prefer using a brush and that's completely fine. I just know that with my skin, um, a brush doesn't work nearly as well for application. And I will say it is definitely a little bit deeper than my natural skin tone um, because you can see it around my eyes that there isn't quite uh, the same match on there. But if I just pull it down on my neck, like it looks pretty fine. And then as soon as I go in with bronzer, it's gonna be fine. Do I find this foundation to be as life-changing <laughs> as the website makes it out to be? No, it is coming across like, a very standard lightweight foundation. Um, there is minimal coverage with this. It did even out a little bit of the redness. Um, I, I will say though, it is definitely very, very light coverage because I'm definitely still seeing like around my chin, some redness on my cheeks, some redness. I can definitely still make out like all of the freckles and different skin discolorations that I have. So if you are someone that is wanting like a more full coverage one, this is not it. But I also don't think that this one is the one that is their full coverage foundation. I think that this one is meant to be more natural, um, which is what I prefer anyway, because I don't wanna look like I have um, like a blocked off 
face full of foundation unless I'm having like a really bad skin day, in which case I want everything covered up. Make everything that looks bad and visible underneath. <laughs> Normally I'm uncomfortable enough in my skin that even if there's some imperfections going on, I just want it to be lightweight so that by the time I'm done putting everything else on, I don't feel like I'm wearing a pound of makeup. I also say I just, uh, I got my hair straightened today, um, along with like filling in the roots a little bit more and I wanted it straightened instead of curled because I was like, I want to see how long it's gotten. And it's, uh, it's gotten pretty long. It's uh, down to here. So that's exciting on my getting my long hair uh, back journey. Uh, while I was in Germany, I had chopped my hair like super short to like above my chin. And it's been years to get it to this long. So I'm excited that it's finally getting there. And then of course, what happened a couple days ago, I was like, should I cut it again? And then I was like, no, that's an intrusive thought we're not gonna let win because it's taken forever to get to this point. So I'm gonna leave it for a while and enjoy it. <laughs> so I don't have a new concealer. So I'm just gonna throw this on real quick off camera. Um, it is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. It's one of my favorites. And so I'm just gonna dab that guy on and we'll be back. Okay, I also threw my brows on real quick just because <laughs> I didn't have anything new for them either. And as I was filling them in, I'm like, wow, I should have trimmed these. <laughs> so that was fun. But we are going to jump into the face products next. So I have two of the P. Louise face palettes that we are going to use. One of them is the, but baby, it's cold outside palette with all of the different pretty pink blushes on there. And then the other one, which I am so excited about, is the Just Roll With It bronzing palette. Oh, I cannot wait to use this. I have been wanting to use P. Louise for bronzing. And so I was so excited that they came out with a palette for it. So we are just going to dive right into that. And I think the shade that I'm going to use is this guy down here, because I think this one is gonna be a little bit too light. And these guys are a little too much on the warm side. This guy's leaning a little cool tone. So I think I'm gonna grab that one and we'll see how pigmented it is because a lot of the face products from P. Louise are very pigmented. So here we go. Let's see if this was the right choice or not. Undecided so far, it's pretty, uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> also very much on the warm side, I can definitely say that. Um, and for contour, you don't want things to be on the warm side. You want them to be on the cool tone side so it does look more like a shadow instead of dirt. <laughs> And so, might have grabbed the wrong one for that, but we're gonna make it work. I'm just gonna blend it out. I think it's still looking fine. So, this is just all about trying stuff out. So, you know, it is what it is. Okay, here we go, tricks. Oh yeah, that is a very warm toned bronzer. I also went a little heavy handed. <laughs> Whoopsie, well. This is fine. <laughs> All right, I think that blended out okay. One of the tips uh, that I have if you go a little too heavy handed with your contour is to use the same sponge that you used uh, for your foundation. And it has usually a little bit of a residue on there. And so you'll just lightly go over where you put the bronzer and it just blends it into the foundation a little bit better so that that way you're not quite so uh, crazy looking with it. And that has yet to really go wrong for me. So this is already much more blended in than what is, was before. And then as soon as I go over with the blush, we should be right in business. So that being said, <laughs> which of the blushes do I want to use? I think I'm going to go with this guy right here because it is a little bit more on like the burnt rose side without being too deep of a shade. So let's go ahead and see that guy. Oh yeah, that's very, very light. I think we can even go deeper. So I think we'll go into the shade right next to it. That's just like a slightly darker version of that. Yeah, that's definitely the deeper shade of the two. Um, I do like going a little more heavy handed on my blush, which also helps to blend out the bronzer a little bit more. Um, so <laughs> I think given that like everything, uh, my foundation, my bronzer, everything has been a little bit deeper than what I would normally go with, might as well have the blush be a little deeper too. All right, yeah, that looks, that looks nice. Um, I don't mind the blush being a little bit stronger of a shade. 
I think it makes me look more awake and alive <laughs> than what I currently am looking. All right, for the highlighter, I'm just gonna jump into one of my copacetic highlighters real quick. This is the Vanilla Peach Bellini shade. I love their packaging with these little paw prints. They are so, so cute. And then this is the shade on the inside. It's just a little bit more of a goldish kind of shade, a little bit peachy. And it just gives a nice glow, especially if you use a brush. Um, this is with my finger. You can just see how potent that would be if I use my finger on there. But with a brush, it just gives like a really nice natural kind of look. So there you can see just ever so slight just gives a little bit of that kind of goldish on top of the blush, which also kind of helps to tone down like a little bit of how pink uh, the blush was. And so I think that really kind of pulled it all together. I like it. <laughs> So then the next new thing that we are going to use was a gift from a friend of mine. This is from Unearthly Cosmetics. This is their new Dreamer palette. So before we do the look, we are going to go ahead and swatch all of these sparkly shades. I'm not gonna swatch the matte shades just because I don't feel like swatching mattes is an accurate representation of the quality of the shades. But for the shimmers, I swatch them all day, so I'm gonna take my watch off because that's just gonna get in the way. <laughs> all right, here we go. So the first one that we are going to swatch is going to be Float, and it looks like a really nice kind of um, champagne-y shimmer shade with some lighter speckles in there. There's that guy. You can see very, very pigmented, very opaque, really, really beautiful shade on there. Very much so if you were someone that enjoys neutrals, this metallic shade is going to be perfect for you. And I mean, it goes really nicely with that highlight from Copacetic. Like, those two together you could already make a nice look out of. Then the next shade is going to be Imaginary, which looks very, very Barbie pink to me. So, I'm excited to see how that guy goes. It is definitely very Barbie pink, but then has like a uh, yellowish kind of shimmer sparkles on top. So there you can see just how bright pink it is. And then it has these little gold speckles in there that kind of help to uh, to change the tone from being too, too vibrant of a pink, but it's still very, very nice, very bright. Love that. The next one is going to be Fantasy. Ooh, okay, so this is a different formula than those first two. I can definitely also see some holographic shimmer in there and it is deeper. So this has a black base to it and a beautiful kind of eggplant purple. And then what looks like gold and pink, maybe a little bit of like lime green speckles in there too. I mean, look how gorgeous that purple is. And then you can see all of these little speckles in there that add that shimmer to it, which is really, really nice. Just absolutely beautiful. That will be lovely on the eye. I do love a good deeper purple shade. Um, this one actually has like almost a little bit of a hint of like some raspberry in there too that's kind of warming it up a little bit. Um, even though I'm not a huge fan of like mauve pink tones, a good purple we know I love and that is a good purple. Then we have the shade Tranquil which I think is back to the formula of the first two. It's a little bit more of a chonky boy and a lighter kind of lilac purple, a little bit more on the sheer side. So there you can see that guy, very, very pretty, but we can definitely see it's more of a sheer kind of toppery shade. It has a little bit of some of those gold specks in there too, but absolutely gorgeous, nice, cool toned, purpley lilac. Then the next one is going to be Dream State, and this guy really looks interesting, like it's gonna be a silver hollow on there. Very thick consistency, uh, but when swatched, interesting, it shears out a little bit, so that's kind of cool. Um, that makes it more layerable, and it's a lighter silver hollow on there, so you can really see how nice light silver it is. Definitely more similar to this guy with how sheer it is. So that would actually make a beautiful topper and then just has this really subtle holographic glitter in there that adds that little bit of kind of sparkle to it that makes it glow. 
but very, very pretty. And then the last shade is Drift, and this looks like a deeper kind of gunmetal metallic shade. And I think this is gonna be, oh yeah. This one is more similar in formula to this purple guy where it's thicker. But look at that. That is a beautiful gunmetal shade. Almost has a little bit of like a, a dark purple undertone to it. Uh, that, that makes it a little bit more fun than just a straight dark silver on there. But would pair, I mean these three, these four really beautiful together. I am very excited. I definitely think I'm going to do a look that's going to combine some of those silver gray tones with some of the purple. I think that's going to be a very fun look. So with the whole palette, what we have here is I definitely think I'm going to dip into this kind of grayish tone. It does have ever so slight, like a little bit of a brown in there. Um, so it's not straight gray. Um, and so I think that's going to be really nice with these two shades. And then I'm wondering if I might add this guy as a topper with that. I think that could be really, really fun just to have kind of those purple notes in there with an otherwise all grayish silver kind of look. That's the vibe that I think I'm feeling with this palette. All right, I'm gonna start with that clouded gray shade right there. Since I wasn't quite sure how dark of a gray this was gonna end up being on the lid, I started kind of halfway back so that that way, if it ended up being something where I needed to just have it be the, the darker portion of the look, I could. But I think this is just gonna be a really good all around shade for the lid. I don't think it's too dark, but I also don't think it's too light. So I think this is gonna be perfect for just the whole entire eyeball. All right, so that's the gray all over. And so now I'm gonna go in, I think to deepen it up just a little bit around the edges, I'm gonna go in with this night owl shade. That's kind of that deeper brown, just ever so slight around the corners um, to, to kind of add a little bit of smokiness to it. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Gives it a little bit of something extra there. So I'm gonna go into the metallics now with my packing brush. And I think I'm gonna start off with Dream State, which is that lighter silver shade. And then we'll kind of see how that goes before I go into any of the others. Oh yeah, I mean, that's layering lovely you can I mean if you go in with a dry packing brush like you can go as light or as heavy-handed as you want so that is a really good shade if you were like wanting to add like a smidge of color and like just start to get into shimmers if you're someone that's a little bit uncomfortable with using shimmers that is a really nice layerable shade and then as you get more comfortable just go a little heavier a little heavier uh, I'm gonna go into the Drift shade next, which is that deeper metallic shade, just a little bit on the outer half to kind of help with deepening that up. Oh, I love that shade. Oh, goodness, that is nice. Oh, I love it. Oh, and these two metallics are blending together so, so nice. I mean, look at that. That is so pretty. Oh yeah, that is, this is a really nice smoky eye. I really like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into Dream State just a little bit to pull that a little bit over the top of the deeper shades so that it doesn't come forward quite so much um, because I'm really wanting it just in the back third rather than the back half. Yeah, that worked out really well. So now we're gonna add that tiny bit of purple by going in with the uh, the tranquil shade right there and I'm gonna layer that just in a little bit on like the front portion there so I'm ever so lightly dipping in there oh oh it makes it glow oh oh, oh I love that okay <laughs> I mean, I, I like it either way, like with the purple or without, I think it's a beautiful look. So I'm not upset either way. I think this is turning out absolutely lovely. That's so pretty. I'm really liking this. Okay. I'm trying to um, try different styles of looks out. And so this is 
I'm trying to be a little more classy with this one while also still adding in the color. I think it looks really, really pretty how this turned out. So the next product that we have is going to be a liner that I picked up from uh, Benefit. This is the their Real Extreme Precision Liner, and I had grabbed that a few weeks ago at uh, at Ulta, and I was like, you know what? This is the year of the liner for me. I know I don't typically use liner, but I'm like, you know what? We're gonna learn how to give ourselves a little wing. So you're gonna be right here with me as I try this out. It could ruin it. Fingers crossed it doesn't. Okay, okay. I think that's it's a cute little. <laughs> I will say that so far this is the least messy liner I've ever done. Anybody else holding their breath with me? <laughs> All right, I have the liner applied. There was a lot of holding my breath, a lot of, um, of course, the doggos were like, oh, oh, are we doing something where you need 100% of your concentration on that one thing? Now's the time for us to get up and start playing. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw on liner next. I'm just using the Pixie Endless Silky Eye Pen, and this guy is in the shade Bronze Beam. All right, since I already had the black liner on, I didn't wanna go with something that was like too, too deep on there. And so this is more of just like a bronzy kind of shade. So for the under lash, uh, like the lower lash line, I just used the Wander Beauty Mile High Club Volume and Lengthening Mascara. This is like my go-to for the under uh, lash portion just because the brush on there is one of those thinner kind of longer brushes. And so I can be a little more precise on there. Whereas the one that I am going to use for the top has a thicker brush. And that is the Intense Thickening Mascara with Castor Oil from Grande Drama. Uh, I used this back in Germany a ton. And then just ever since getting to the States, I haven't really used it. And I was like, you know what? Let's pick up a new one uh, because it does dry out after four years. <laughs> And I was like, let's pick up another one and, and see what we think. I don't remember the bristles looking quite like this though. So that's um, interesting. We'll see how it does. I might need to go into a different one. Um, it's certainly lengthening a little bit, but definitely not volumizing in the way that I'm used to this guy doing. So I don't know. I was gonna try and compare it to the older brush, but it looks like I don't have the old one anymore. So instead I just grabbed the uh, Urban Decay Perversion Mascara because that guy, if you're wanting volume, look how thick that brush is. It's a chunky, chunky boy. And so, oh yeah, this is the thickening that I was wanting. I mean, realistically, those two combined is really, really pretty. Yeah, I think that looks really nice. I will also say this particular color combination uh, is really making my eyes blue. So what I'm seeing in the viewfinder, I think this is a good makeup day. I am actually really liking how everything's turning out. And the foundation, I will say, um, looking at my cheeks, so I have a lot of texture on my face and a lot of the areas it's fairly standard amount of texture that I'm seeing in the mirror, but there is like a little bit around the top here where it looks like it has smoothed down a little bit and then maybe like a little bit in the T-zone. Um, I will however say it still does not look very well blended with the foundation. So it is like around the forehead a little bit patchy in certain areas where I can see like definitely clumps of the foundation and then on my nose there's definitely certain areas and on my chin where there's not full coverage of like where I had applied it but from a distance I look great <laughs> so just no one's allowed to come too close to me <laughs> otherwise you're gonna see all the flaws but I think overall it looks super cute. I, I will say I suck at eyeliner. That is 100% hands down a fact. <laughs> um, but hey, we're gonna get there. And I definitely will say that of the liquid liners that I have like tried in the past, 
This one did go on the smoothest where it was like the easiest to work with and there is no bleeding whatsoever. So where you put it is where it stays. And that was something that I was testing in Ulta with a few of the different uh, liners that I was looking at was like I had doodles all over my hands where I was checking out which ones are bleeding, which ones aren't. And this one specifically from Benefit did not bleed. Like it stayed where you put it, which was really, really nice. And it also doesn't have a super crazy long tip to it. Uh, it's one of the shorter kind of stubbier ones without being too thick. And so it works really, really nice for precision on there. So I'm, I'm very pleased with this guy so far. And then the final thing we need to do is my lips. So I have three lippies from Unearthly Cosmetics and these guys are so, so cute. They have little like kaleidos type things down at the bottom that you can shake up that have like stars and stuff inside there and some glitter. It is so cute and they all have that. So you can just be like shaking them all around and see all these little glitter things inside of there. I thought that was just such a cute touch. And then it kind of has this gradient from gray going down to whatever the shade color is. So the only one that doesn't have like added sparkle to it is this guy, which is just a really nice kind of corally pink shade, which we know I love a good corally orangish pink for the lip. And then we have more so orange and then more so purple. So I think because we are wearing a, the purple, I'm gonna go with the purple gloss. This is gonna be very interesting to see if this is a little more sheer or if it adds a lot of pigment, in which case I might panic. Well, that's an interesting doe foot. It is uh, very bended, looks kind of like a sock. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> it is, um, it is glowy. <laughs> I'll say though, like that formula, even though it definitely, you can see is very, very sparkly look at that that's a pretty shade um very light weight um no goop no stick whatsoever uh sometimes with lip glosses you'll get that like that little bit of like added drool where you feel like you're spitting very minimal with this one um I don't know if anyone else has that maybe just me but like I get that when with certain lip glosses if they're very goopy I get where I'm like, I feel like my mouth is just, there's so much there. Um, also has a very nice kind of sweet scent to it. I can't even describe what that is, but it's very nice. Tastes a bit like Play-Doh. <laughs> so if you're someone that likes Play-Doh, you'll like the taste of it. Um, but I, I think that's a really, really nice gloss that, um, I mean, it fits the vibe, I guess, of the look. Now we're definitely into the like purple space queen kind of look. I do wonder how that would go if I threw the, the pink on top with it, kind of mixed the two, um, just to see. Oh, that is very pink now. It's something, it's a nice sweet scent. I don't know exactly what it is, but I mean, those layered pretty cool. I definitely made the it to a very magenta -y pink, but I'm not mad at it. Um, I think the whole look is really, really pretty, aside from me like not knowing how to apply the liner correctly, but everything else turned out really well. I will say that the foundation is gonna take a little bit more work. I don't know how I feel about it yet. The primer felt fine. I will also say like just touching my face now, there's no greasiness to it, which is nice. So the primer did dry down really, really nicely. So I think the primer, fine. Uh, the foundation, again, I'm gonna work on a little more. As far as the eyeshadow palette, love. So, so good. If you guys get a chance to pick up Unearthly Cosmetics palettes, highly recommend doing so. I'll probably end up using the two fall ones that I picked up at some point in a get ready with me in the near future because those are very, very good. The mascara, uh, I was disappointed with the updated brush slash formula. So I'm probably not gonna pick that up anymore. Liner, very nice precise liner, even though I'm struggling still. I think if you're needing to get a particular liquid liner to learn with, that one is a really, really good one because 
it, I mean, it did what I was asking it to do. <laughs> the lip product's really good. I think that the bronzing and blush palettes, really, really pretty. Just need to figure out which shades work best for me, but absolutely love the formula that they have. They're very easy to, to kind of blend out. Um, they layer really nicely. And I mean, we know how much I love copacetic highlighters. So that was no surprise that I love that one. But let me know what you guys think of everything. Have you picked up any of these products? Do you have any words of wisdom? Barbara Jean, if you're watching, what did I do wrong on applying the foundation? I feel like mistakes were made. <laughs> User error for sure. So let me know. But I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you did not, as we always do here. And if you made it to the end of the video and you have not yet subscribed, I would love it if you join my family here. We talk a ton about indie brands. We do really colorful makeup. I swatch metallics, shimmers, all of that stuff for you guys as much as humanly possible. So if that sounds like fun, I would love it if you would join us. At least drop a comment down below. Let me know the things that you guys are loving. And other than that, you just go have a good one.